So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today during your lunch breaks and between classes, you know, wherever you may be tuning in uh, for our NYU Reese Exit West, a Tan and Fireside chat. Um, for those of you who may not be familiar, NYU Reads brings the NYU community together around a single common reading chosen by a university committee um, comprised of faculty, students, and administrative representatives. Um, and so we're building on our undergraduate school's first year reading programs. NYU Reads extends this dialogue beyond Welcome Week and opens up to the entire university community. And so this semester, um, we were tasked with reading Exit West by Mohsen um, Hamid, who actually gave a wonderful lecture at the university just about a week ago. Um, and the novel tells the story of a young couple by the names of Nadia and Saeed, who has escaped from their war-torn home, turns into a global voyage. And their story opens up questions about borders, migration, love and loss, what it means to be human or a citizen, what it means to be part of a community and what home means in multiple and shifting contexts. And so today we at Student Affairs are thrilled to be hearing from TAN professor Gennady Civil and graduate student Camila Saavedra Lozano, who will come shortly, come on shortly and introduce themselves. And they've graciously volunteered to share their own journeys with regard to you know, immigrating to the US and how they've each found community and belonging. So thank you so much for being here today. Um, please note that live captioning is provided by Zoom. And so if you'd like to enable that, you can at the bottom of your screen. And if you're just joining us, please be sure to confirm um, that this meeting will be recorded and will be up on our website in about a week or two. But without further ado, I will turn it over to you, Camila and Kennedy. Thank you. Uh, well, first, I guess I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Camila Saavedra. I am a second year uh, management of technology student at, here at Tandon, and I am uh, originally from Mexico City. I'm really excited to be with you today. Hi, I'm Gennady Sivil, um, a young professor at uh, Tandon School of Engineering, Computer Science and Software Engineering and uh, working full-time at uh, Google and uh, New York City, and originally from Odessa, Ukraine, um, once upon a time. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, I guess we'll jump right in. I, uh, I really liked the book. I really thought it was a very interesting way of uh, having this magical realism elements with something that is very real, uh, such as migration and especially in times of conflict. So uh, I guess the first thing that I would like to ask you is like, what does belonging mean to you? It's interesting, it's a good question. So belonging, it is really feeling to me, feeling, well, <laughs> I don't want to say belonging is feeling, you know, to belong somewhere. It, it's it's uh, understanding that this is this land is yours that um, um, when you walk around in New York City in particular, for me, um, I feel at home. Um, it's been many years and it took a while, but now, you know, I go outside, um, I walk, you know, I go to Tandem in Brooklyn and I'll walk around in New York City where the office, my work office is, I drive back or take a train back home uh, on Long Island where I live, go to the beach, I don't know, drive to wineries, uh, travel around the country, it feels home. It feels that um, um, everything around me is mine in a certain way, and, and that's um, that's belonging to me. Really, it's uh, feeling that there is connection to this place. There is a connection to people around you that we all, at some level, have something to um, that we share. Uh, even the minute small things. I don't know sports. Um, uh, food, uh, it, it's uh, the, the feeling in the air, you know, when you um, get off the train in New York City and you get picked up by a wave of, you know, hundreds, hundreds of people kind of swimming together with you to, to get out of the station. <laughs> uh, even that, um, all of that is belonging in a way that um, it is you, it's yours, you belong here, it's okay. Kind of, kind of like that. And um, like I mentioned, that thing, that took a long time to uh, to appear. Yeah, I think I uh, I like the the concept you mentioned of the little things. Uh, I've I've been living here in New York for about a year and a half now, uh, but I would come to New York very often. And uh, 
uh, one of the things at the beginning is like you see all this you you look at the big picture of new york city and a very big scary city and then you start living here and there's like the little things that you suddenly share with all the other people and the you know there's a delay in the train and you're you feel like the anger and like but it's such, like it's it's a common thing or like the pride of when you look at something in the city and and it's that moment where you look around and you see something and it's like you're part of it and that is part of you too that that like connects both elements that i think it's also a really great way of saying belonging is not so much it's it, it can be about the big things but it's also about the little things that make your everyday yeah it's uh i don't know like um i quite often walk from from the office offices in chelsea and the uh, take penn station you know drive home uh, uh train home and I walk back and quite often uh, a tourist would stop me and ask a question and the uh, ability to answer and actually know what they're talking about is very nice uh, yeah like when they first ask you like where is this street or where is this and you actually know the answer you're mm -hmm. like oh yeah i was in that position one time there i didn't right. know where things right. were and it's really cool and um and within nyu where have you found the greatest sense of belonging also, well, time demand is, is in Brooklyn, and uh, when we uh, when we came here in 1993, we lived in Brooklyn for for, for a while, for uh, eight years. Um, it was in, in Bensonhurst, South Brooklyn. Uh, so Brooklyn, to me, uh, is home even even more than New York City. Um, in in many ways, um, look, I drove a car service when I got here. In 94, I was driving car service, mostly around Brooklyn, because, uh, you know, venturing out to Manhattan was very scary. So coming to Tandon now, um, you know, and looking around and hearing how people talk, I, I had this quintessential Brooklyn moment when a couple of years ago, um, first time actually, when I came to, or second time when I came to Brooklyn, when I started at NYU. So I got off the subway and I walk up the stairs and there is this incredible variety of people uh, with a dude just walking and carrying a boombox on, on the shoulder with like rap blasting and then there was a couple of uh, you know uh, um, uh, people like deep in their prayer just walking you know just looking in the um, in the in the religious texts and there's a you know a bunch of teenagers running around and screaming and, and it's like this is so home because that's what brooklyn is um an incredible melting pot where things just blend and create something new and, and tandem right in the middle of all that you know downtown brooklyn it's it's you know it's it's i'm going to say something slightly controversial i think it's that campus is way cooler than the one at the uh, uh washington square <laughs> <laughs> i mean it is in the middle of of, of like such a, an amazing mix of uh, new york is known for its mix of cultures right i I believe I read this article the other day about like the amount of languages that you, that are spoken in New York City and the amount of people who you actually have English as a second language and the, and there's you you feel that in the subway whenever you come in and then there's like so many things happening and Brooklyn is like a great place where all this happens and Tandon isn't like the heart of it so I I, I think it's great and even within um, I've always loved trying new foods and. If I cannot travel around the world, at least I'm gonna travel well, like through my taste buds, right? Uh, and uh, and if it, like around the campus, there are so many great places to find food from around the world, or to even buy the things that you need to prepare those dishes. That it's like a great like, mixing pot of 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 everything that's happening. So yeah, I think that's also um, part of what makes Tandon unique. For me, I think that the, the the thing that made me like the greatest sense of belonging at NYU was just the the how like New Yorkers are very have this image that they're not really friendly and that they're like they're all busy and that they're all stressed out and so like get out of their way because they have to go somewhere else, right? And uh, and I, when I got here, when I entered NYU, like everyone was actually really friendly because it, everyone is also, well, not everyone, but NYU and Tandon has such a big international student uh, population that we're all kind of in the same boat in that we're 
uh, entering this the city and just having a, a lot of people just help out and say like oh yeah like you don't know how to get around the subway oh download this app and it will give you this thing so oh download this thing or check out these resources so i think that that moment where i'm like oh you're actually not alone in this right is what made me feel like i'm at nyu and, and we're all in this together yeah yeah new yorkers are i don't know honestly i've had this conversation so many times over the years i actually think that new yorkers are very friendly just don't stand in their way <laughs> if you just move aside and ask a question people will stop and they will answer your question um and they will actually go to great lengths to explain like you said you know get this app you know talk you know get on the station make sure to you know all the um, um explanation that you need uh, it's all there it's all there and they actually people take interest in you sometimes uh, if they have time, people are usually, you know, very, very busy, but there is this level of interest in you that it's kind of like a tough love. They, they will, you know, a little high, a little rushed, a little, but they're actually listening and they will answer. Um, I, and I, I've had, um, you know, um, I haven't had this experience in other places in the country. I, I think New York is unique. Yeah, there's like a curiosity too, the, like you mentioned, the, the, the it's not only I'll uh, I I remember there was this one time where I was in the subway and uh, I saw this couple. Uh, this was like pre pandemic, right? So there was this couple like tourists uh, from I think Italy because they were speaking Italian and they were, you know, looking at phone kind of like speaking confused and saying names of stations and uh, and I was like, oh, I remember when I was at that position one time. So I'm like, I came close by and I'm asking like, hey, do you need any help? Um, and there, there's like, yeah, we want to go to this station. And so they're like, I'm like, oh, you have to jump here and get out there. Uh, and they're like, oh, is there any other place around there that we should visit? They wanted to go to like the Oculus uh, train station. Mm -hmm. And so I started telling them like different pla places to go. And they're like, oh, thank you. That and then, you know, I get in the train and then I tell them, this is the one where you should get out. Because I remember that there were people that were also helping me out when the, like I first started like walking around the city on my own. And so, yeah, there's, it's, if there's time and we're not late because there's always like in a rush, there's always someone willing to help. I really like that about New yeah. York. New York uh, subway though is an experience. I mean, I, yeah. oh my God, overwhelming, scary. <laughs> Yeah, takes time. Everything takes time. And it's even harder because uh, it's not only confusing at first, there are so many different routes and express and local and all those things. But then the service is always changing. And so trains are never stopping when they're supposed to. So yeah. yeah. Um, one of the the in the book, one of the main themes is uh, migration, like we talked about. And then there's a, a particular uh, passage that uh, Hamid Reza says, it was said in those days that the passage was both like uh, dying and like being born, referring to the different attempts to emigrate to other countries and other continents. Uh, what do you think uh, or what does it, it mean for you, this this passage? And like, what is your experience migrating from your home yeah, country? Yeah, it's actually, it, 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 it's interesting. Thank you for noticing that passage. I, I, it, when I read the book, I kind of stopped and re read the sentence again because it's so true. Um, yeah, it's everything is different. So when we, so in the book, you know, they're talking about going through the the portal, you know, through the doors, and it's hard, yeah. and 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 the person leaves the door exhausted, and they have to lie down for a bit on the, on the somewhere, you know, on the ground, so they have their strength to uh, to get up and keep walking again. Um, so um, it, it spoke to me. So we came here was in August 93 and must have been 110 degrees that day. Very, very hot. A long flight. Um, and we, I was a lot younger. Uh, we had a, uh, so we, we came here, my, my family came here, my wife, myself, and we had a, um, a five month old. Uh, my daughter was five months old at the time. Uh, so getting out of the plane and walking in, in, in the, JFK through various underground tunnels to, to get into the, the original customs room. I, I remember this as if it was yesterday. Uh, it's actually somewhat similar to that experience that they're saying in the book. 
because by the time you get there and there are hundreds of people, they're all waiting, everybody's scared and nervous. And the customs officials and the government, the immigration officials, they all like walk around and they look kind of scary. Uh, so you, we, we actually sat on the ground with, you know, holding, the, uh, holding my daughter uh, for, I don't know, like, you know, at least 40 minutes or so, just like not speaking, just like staring at the wall because we needed to um, get some strength a little bit so we can like, continue on the journey. So that, that all that was very similar. You know, you come into the place where it is foreign. It's, you don't really understand what's going on. You know, you don't speak language all that well. And um, you, don't, you don't speak the language all that well. Um, you have no idea how things work. Um, so, uh, you know, we went through the um, JFK, through the customs, and uh, there were some people waiting for us, our relatives, so we got into their cars. It's such a relief when you talk to somebody who speaks your language and uh, you don't have to constantly translate in your head from one language to the other. Um, yeah, all that is literally as if you're uh, not quite dying, but everything is changing. You're um, the sky looks different. The, the everything is different. The the roads the roads look different. The cars when they met us in '93, uh, those old big like Oldsmobiles and like the, the, and you get in and the 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 instrument panel looks weird. Everything looks weird. And then you you know they drove us to Brooklyn. Um, you know various bags and suitcases and all that. And they had a a fourth or fifth floor walk up. Uh, so after this journey, you, 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 you take your bags, you take them upstairs and you like collapse exhausted. Uh, yeah, so yeah, literally like very, yeah, that particular sentence in the book really spoke to me because that's very similar. I mean, it, it's, it's very cool how the author took the, this like very poetic, very like flowery language and, and described this experience in uh, quite a, a matter of fact tone not not a big deal not not a drama or anything this is just what happens that was one of the things that really like i liked about the book where um no over dramatic things it's just matter of fact explanation how how it happens a mm -hmm. and the things that normally would be considered like you would consider them um you know war you know immigration people dying trauma you know the way it was explained it's really like a day-to-day -day thing um, which is kind of how it was. It's one day at a time uh, and you you get up in the morning and you do what you have to do. That's kind of, you have no other choice. And yeah, it's very similar. Like, like, like you said, like the author said, like a dying and being born. Pretty cool. I, uh, I really like, like two of the things that you just mentioned. One about this passage and like everything it's new. I, uh, the flight from Mexico City is not as long, it's like four hours, and it wasn't that, like, I remember that during the, the flight, I was also like thinking, oh, they, I have to do all these things when I get there, right? But entering JFK is like crazy because it's such a big place. And then uh, I remember that I was about three hours maybe in immigration, and, and you're exhausted because you've just come out of the plane. My flight was like at 7 a.m. So I had to be at the airport at four, which meant I had to woke up at two. So I pretty much, I had like little to no sleep. And then going through immigration, it's like walking very slowly and you're kind of like scared because it's so new and there's like, it's just scary. And there are so many things that you don't know if you're supposed to or not supposed to. So you're just like trying to follow what everyone else is doing. And, uh, and then you enter and it's every, like, you, I guess the whole, uh, everything is so new and everything is like, uh, there are so many things happening that you just have to like go with them. And by the time you reach the final destination, you're just exhausted. You're exhausted emotionally and physically and mentally because you've had to be super aw like aware of everything. And there's this, this is a very big experience. And then it's also physically uh, exhausting. And so, yeah, at, like by the end of it, you arrive and you just need like a buffering period to like adjust and rest and be like, I need to to readjust everything. But also I think like um, for me, what it also meant, this idea of like 
uh, like the passages like dying and being born again is you you leave so many things behind but not only like the physical things or like your family but also a little bit of who you are because now you're in a different place and in this different place there are different things and so you you kind of come in with like an like a, an open mind of saying I, I'm going to be doing things differently now because I'm in this new space and so a little bit of myself is now there because like it, it stayed in Mexico because I'm no longer the same person and I'm no longer going to be doing the same things but it's a, like a different way of of I'm this I'm, I'm, I'm me but now I'm a New York City me because I'm here and I have to do things that in the New York City way yeah. and then also this this thing about um which is something very common in magical realism of just saying things that happen and that if you go outside you're like they're, they're saying it so casually when there's like big things you know uh I I felt a lot about what's happening right now that it's like in, in the world and you're like it's a one day at a time kind of thing and you just have to go with it and you you can't stop and double think of like start reflecting about everything but you cannot do it every day so something just happened and you're like okay well it happens and 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 i i have other things to to focus on i have uh to keep going and and so they just they they go right yeah yeah, it's, uh, I, I would say that the first time we were able, like I was able to like, kind of stop and look back, I don't know, maybe 10 years into it, <laughs> a while. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's really crazy. Um, and the whole, uh, even in the, at the beginning when it's just getting the setup of, of how the situation in uh, the city where they live, it's starting to get like deteriorate. If like they 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 mentioned that well, I mean things were happening, but they weren't really like both uh, both Nadia and Say that aren't really like overthinking them. They're just going with it, and they they're trying to keep on being together, keep on meeting, even if it's uh, like sneaking around and things like that. So it's a lot about you have your 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 group of friends, and you have your family, and you have the things that you have to, you want to do, and you. Just try to keep connecting and keep growing these experiences. Trying not to get too involved sometimes with what's happening, and sometimes you have to. But sometimes it's it's the right. flow of every day. Yeah, it's a day to day. So all of a sudden they can no longer hold the hands, right? Uh, because yeah. uh, they could be caught and killed for that in, in the book, and they yeah. just take it like okay. So that's just yet another day. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And so you mentioned about like coming to to New York uh, all these years ago, and the like travesty that was going through the whole process. Uh, after you got here, did your experience live up to your expectations? I don't know if I actually had any expectations. It was uh, you know it was very young. Um, the expectations were actually you know maybe yes because the expectations has always been an idea that this is the place to come and make yourself and, and, and your family um, life for. So the idea where if you, um, the classic American dream where, you know, if you work hard enough, you achieve things. Um, I would have to say that it largely worked out um, the way it's supposed to. I mean, not like, I mean, not, I don't think there was ever expectation on my part that uh, we will be, I don't know, super rich, super successful. But there is this idea where you're free to do what you want. Uh, and that actually, um, I, my personal um, experience is that, yes, it is possible to do this. It is possible to, to be free. It is possible to do what you like, what your passion is. And by doing this, um, build um, a good life for, for yourself and for your family. Um, not anything you know glitzy or, or, or fabulous or anything but really a good day-to-day -day life where most importantly there is a, a, a degree of freedom that uh, wasn't possible in uh, in all world i uh, i think there's a lot of like what you said that you didn't have any expectations and then he's like oh well i mean there was some but there wasn't like the big expectation of i'm gonna come here and do all these things it's uh it's a lot of uh, also like what they 
the main characters of the book are going through, they don't have a lot of expectations in like specific things. Well, like, you go in and there's a, a general idea of why you're going somewhere, but it's not, a, I'm pretty sure there's people who go somewhere with like goals and objectives and expectations, but for a lot of the, a lot of the time you, you come to another place with just a general idea of where you're going and what you're, why you're going there, but there aren't that really goals. And then it kind of shapes and you say, oh, well, it exceeded my expectations because I have this idea and then all these things happen. Uh, and at the same time, I didn't have any expectations. So anything that could happen was something that I was gonna be welcoming of because I came here for just the concept, not so much the, the topics. Um, oh, thank you, Rose. We're really happy you got to be here. Uh, I uh, I also want to ask you about like there's there's this this intersection uh, within the novel of migration story that follows two lovers rather than one individual. So we have like two uh, points of view of of uh, the the whole process, and I think. I came here on my own as a student, so I it was just like my expectations, like even if they weren't that that defined, my expectations and uh, my perception of that had to shape that were shaped during during the process. Uh, but you just mentioned that you came here with your with your family, so uh, I, I think this in the in the book we see how even if the main idea of coming to another place like this. Kind of concept that it's not very defined can be the same. There are when you get there, there are different perceptions that sometimes clash with each other, or that have like different uh, or that match in that. But they're they have provide different perspectives of the same process, and then they interact with each other. And in the book, they like they have different paths uh, in what they find and how going to a new place shapes both uh, Said and, and Nadia. How have uh, relationships evolved since your migration, and, and how was that process? Right. Yeah. It's a. Um, it's a. The book is kind of bittersweet when they they yeah. you know end up. Um, they were, their path you know diverged, and they they still. Uh, at some level, there is still love there. They they still love each other at some you know it's in some shape or form, and. Um, the, the experience though in their in their journey was that they're very slowly but very inevitably just growing apart and, and they notice it they don't like it but there's not much they can do about it it just happens um yeah it's a, it's a bittersweet experience and in in my case it's um, fortunately different um, you know we are uh, we are about to in a few months to celebrate my 30 years anniversary with my wife so um throughout all this there was one one common theme is that um, there is a family to come back to always. And, and that is um, amazingly, probably the, the most important thing in life. Um, and the understanding that no matter what, so you do your work, you, you work some more, uh, you come home, you know, <laughs> you go, um, you know, venture into the city and, you, you, and sometimes you drive, you, you drive home to Brooklyn um, you come, you know, 12 o'clock, midnight, exhausted, there's no parking. You, you walk around uh, and you, you drop your car on the high fire hydrant because you have to get at least a couple of hours of sleep. But then you get home and the family is there. So that that is um, one thing that I could say that people, I, I consider myself very fortunate to, to be in that position. And that's been um, a foundation of my um, journey, you know, our journey all these years, really, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's very important. I, uh, I really like how you mentioned the, that it's, it's this, I don't want to say like the light, right, but like the silver lining of, of sometimes that the whole chaos and stress of, of a New York day that sometimes can be great, but sometimes you're, it's like, I just want to sleep and I just want to be in a place where I'm not crowded and like everything, it's, take a, a break yeah. and uh, and yeah like having someone there that to look forward to it's definitely shapes your your experience sure. um for me i would like i i want to say though after i came here i 
if I think I've never had a closest relationship with my mom until I came here. Like I, I, I had a close relationship with her, but, and we, we spoke very often, but it, it wasn't until like I came here that I'm, and I guess the whole pandemic also played played a role in that because now you want to be close and, and the idea that uh, like I would like to be there to help them, help my parents not go out to the supermarket to buy groceries because I don't want them to go out. Uh, makes me also feel like I want to be more in touch with them. But ever since I got here, I, I just feel like, oh, little things. I want to share with someone that comes from where I come from. And, and or like that get, and I, by come from, I don't mean Mexico. I mean like my family, like my, where I, like what, what Jake me and just say all these different things. And uh, I think that, that in my case, it was also the, I came here and then I have all these different things, but then the the at the same time I felt like a, a, a closer or like a stronger link to some of the people that are now back there, and just like I don't want to lose that, so I try to keep to be more aware of it and to keep more in touch with them. Yeah, it's very important. Yeah, so that that's the that's the, that's the bitter sweetness of that book where they they grew apart. Yeah. And the very end of the book, when they get together again after all these years, and they sit in the same city where everything started, and they kind of look at each other, yeah. it's it's a pretty cool scene. It's it's like wow, it's like going for like everything that happened, and they they've been through their they started together and they went par far apart, and then you like they meet, but now they're completely different, uh, mm -hmm. like people in a way, right? There um, was a notion that things. Um, there was a sense of closure, like when yeah. they get back to the city uh, of their birth, right? When the whole the whole thing yeah. started, there was a language in the book where people who live in the city now, like young people, they really only know about that period from the history. So that thing is kind of over and, and done for, and things got a lot better. But at least they, they, I don't know if they say it in so many words, but that was the ex impression I got. Vibe. That's the wife. So that yeah, but and these two people that went through this journey, just throwing around, you know, all over the place, uh, but and then sitting where like in, in the place in that cafe, one I think that I think that was the same cafe when they at some point were, yeah, when they first or something, something I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that that's a, uh, it's actually quite different. So in my experience, so I did so last a couple of summers ago, we went back first time took my children, went back to Odessa where I'm from. It was a very different experience because like I didn't really feel any sense of closure or anything because things really did not get all that much better. <laughs> so <laughs> it was a bit very unfortunate. So like it, I was kind of happy to see it in the book. Yeah, like like that it, it can happen, but you're still looking for that moment yeah. in a future where you yeah, go there so. and you get that closure. Hope so. Yeah. Um, so the the other thing that got my attention in the uh, book was like the way that this this portals and like this like doors right I'm calling them portals because I, for me the, coming from reading sci-fi for me it's a portal but uh -huh. it's more of a magical thing right so this like these doors kind of like take out part of of um, it's like you just move around in a way it takes a toll on you like we talked earlier mm -hmm. but you can just um, move around making uh like the the idea of where you come from a little bit less uh like it doesn't feel that much of a distance because it was just the door right mm -hmm. and so there's now the distance is not so much physical because like i i lived in australia for for a a while when I was a teenager and Australia is so far away from Mexico that a lot of the time I was thinking like, oh, this is like, I am so far away from home in time zones, like 17 hours of difference is crazy, but also in, in like physically, right? And like that was also something that made you like feel that you were coming, like you were spread apart from where uh, you were originally from. But in the book, this kind of like, closes out because there's it's just the, the there's the doors and there's like the, the portals right 
Um, and so we get to, to start thinking about other things that make us belong somewhere and that make us connect with a place, but it's no longer the distance that, like that puts a, a, that gets you far away from where you come from. It's like cultural elements and like you're now in a, in a place or in a society where it's, where things are different. And so that's what, what makes you feel that you're far away from your place, but it's no longer like the path of it. It's the, the differences of it. Um, how did you feel this, this differences and like the concept of being in a place where the distance to your to where you come from is not physical but it's the distance of, of shape in, in societies yeah i want to say yeah. about your perspective yeah, th thank you for that very very good question it's a to me this is a, a process of belonging the same thing that we started talking about when you just come here, everything is very different. And it feels, it, it feels a long time away where um, you don't know how to behave. You don't know um, what is the, um, the, the local custom of, I don't know, uh, how do I get on the subway, uh, the, the, the turnstile, yeah. those um, scary, the, the old style metal doors in, in, in uh, the ones they turn and inevitably like you try to get in in the wrong way and, and they they like lock and they stop you and everybody is looking at you and you think everybody's looking at you nobody cares but you think they're looking at you uh, and you know a thousand things uh, how do you buy a slice of pizza like you know um, it, and you come i remember we went we walked in into a um, a pizzeria in in in, in Barry in in, in Benzenhurst. Uh, that was the first. Uh, you know, my wife and I bought a slice of pizza for, I think it was one ninety nine at the time, which um, seemed like an uh, obscene amount of money to us. And uh, <laughs> uh, there was uh, the you know the typical typical pizzeria when there is a glass um, you know different kind of pizzas and you look at them and you have no idea. I mean, I mean there are labels you know. Uh, I don't know, grandma and uh, pepperoni and you know white cheese, whatever. You have no idea what they are, so you kind of go by how they look. And yeah, yeah, exactly that that one. And the the, the, the person at the counter would, um, Benzenhurst, Brooklyn, they could care less because they've probably seen it all. But you think that they're there, so you know yeah. all those things. And then gradually over years. At some point, I noticed that I no longer kind of have that distance. There is the inner, it's more like closing the distance inside because the geographical distance is still there. But at some point you kind of, you know enough to see where your own cultural background and your own unique perspective doesn't have to be separate, but you kind of in position to bring it in and have it blended with everything else where that melted pot is happening and you no longer afraid to 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 put your pinch into it because um like my estimation that's about 10 years or something like that a while a long while but after that the distance seems to really shrink and you kind of when you're no longer or less afraid you understand that they're all people like you <laughs> and uh you at some point are there to open your mouth and say something and people respond because they're all people. Um, and it's, it's a very cool gradual experience of first you go through this portal, right through the door. I also read science fiction all the time. So yeah, it's a portal. Uh, and uh, the distance seems to be insurmountable. It's very far away. And as you spend more and more time here, the distance really shrinks and you see similarities between um, you in, in your unique background and things you learned when you were a child and all that and other people and you, you again like you realize that we're all people and we're all together in this uh, and that's uh, amazing experience it just it takes a long time that, that it does. <laughs> i uh, what you told me about how uh, you ordered the pizza and you're kind of like self-aware of like everything that you're doing but in new york they've seen it all and there's so many people that yeah. they just like they, they know the drill and they, they'll, they'll go with it and they, there won't be any uh, 
like judgment or or like huh. they will they won't even notice it sometimes reminded me of i i was talking to a friend and uh, they said that sometimes when they are trying to go somewhere like they're walking in the city uh and then they realize you know they that they come out of the subway and they don't want to like stop in the entrance of the subway because you don't want to like stop it yeah. so you don't want to stop in the entrance of the subway but you don't really know where you're supposed to walk because the first moment you get out of the subway you can be a little bit disoriented so you're looking at okay so where's the empire state that that can like give me an idea where i should walk right mm -hmm. uh so it, like she would just come out and walk towards a direction and then you know i like, look at uh, like around and when she re sometimes she realizes that she's walking in the opposite direction of uh -huh. where she should be walking and uh, but she feels like if she stops midway and then walks back like people are gonna be like oh yeah she's lost or something like that so she would like what she she would do is like she would grab her phone and like kind of like as if she was feeling like she was getting a, a message or something and oh, oh oh okay i'm gonna go back because i just received news that I need to go the other direction. Just to feel like to give a motive to the people around her that there's a reason why she was lost in the first place or like walking in the wrong direction, yeah. right? And that with time, she was just like, nobody cares. I've seen so many people like stop, do a, a 180 and then walk the other direction that now she's uh, like feeling more confident in a way of saying, you know what? Yeah, there's like I can I I walk the opposite direction. We've all done it. We've all been through this, and uh, and it's not that that big of a deal. So you don't feel that that you don't you're not in a place that you know or that you're not gonna feel this like level of people looking at you or or even noticing it because everyone is on their own like yeah. kind of a thing. Absolutely, so, I, I've done it a bunch of times. And it's usually yeah. get off the subway, start walking, look for the cross street. You know, yeah. you know is it West 54th? And I'm not trying to see one block. Black. Is it 55th or 50, 53rd? Yeah. Know, I'm going in the right direction. Yeah, I've done it many times. And yeah. it's something we all do, and it's common. But the first time, like you mentioned, you don't know how to do things. Like uh, ordering food on the phone, and it's sometimes super scary because it's like you don't know the protocols or like all those things. But then you you understand that even if you don't know the protocols, your best is probably going to be enough. And so it's going to flow uh, for the rest of it. So I, I have an interesting, funny story. So when we um, so we came August 93, that must have been, I don't know, October, in a couple of months after we came, my wife needed to buy a polish remover, like nail nail polish remover. Yeah. She walked into a 99 cent store, by the way, the best place in the world. Uh, <laughs> 99 cent store, buy anything, and it seems to be all cheap. Somehow you still spend a lot of money. Um, <laughs> she came out with a bottle of uh, what turned out to be a shoe polish. Uh, and the story was that um, looking at the bottle, it doesn't look like nail polish, but it says something polish on it. Yeah. And like scared and too shy to ask. So 99 cents, so we, I think we still have it somewhere as a souvenir. <laughs> and that those things happen all the time, like these little things like that. Uh, I, I'm per, I personally believe that when you have enough confidence to ask this question, that's the first step to, to belonging, but it takes a while. Yeah, definitely. And like, go, go uh, I'd say it's go out of the script in a way, of the script, because um, I had a, an English teacher in Mexico that when she first moved in, she didn't speak Spanish that well, but like her, her go-to was uh, like just when she buys things at the, at the supermarket and things with that, like people would ask you a lot of questions, like you want any cash back and you want all these things. And she would just like go, no, because I, I knew, she knew that that was probably what she was supposed to like, like reply. And, and she was super scared of saying something else. And there was this one time where they asked her like something like, did you find anything you were, everything you were looking for? And she's like, no, because that was her go-to like script of like at the supermarket, you reply no. And they were like, oh, what really? And she, she started like, oh, wait, what? And so that was a moment where she's like, I need to get out of my comfort zone and, and start like going for answers that are not on my, oh, on my script, right? And once you get, you put yourself out there uh, and you realize that nothing, bad happens if you ask and nothing no one is going to judge you if you are a little bit lost then that's the first step of being more yeah. uh, in your you start making 
the place your comfort zone like you expand your comfort zone yeah um, it's, yeah it's a yeah. funny feeling of this <laughs> i uh the last topic that that i wanted to talk about was this book has a lot of topic has a lot of uh themes that go around the idea of how war uh distorts everyday life for those that live in the mist and like uh Hamid conveys like this fear of truck bombs and snipers and our checkpoints and surveillance drones. Uh, we talked about how they he does it in a way that it's it sounds casual, but at the same time you feel the the, the repercussions of it, right? Um, uh, how do you feel like what effect does this have in the people who live through it, and and then the impact that it will have in the right. topic of migration? I've been very fortunate. I've never lived in a war zone. However, I, I do have some limited exposure in 91, 92, just before we left, there was a lot of unsettling, unsettled things in, in the former Soviet Union. And uh, Odessa is Ukraine. And there was an entire, the whole, whole bunch of people actually fighting, maybe like an hour from Odessa. The, and if you would drive, so I have first firsthand experience driving with my friend uh, we had to go visit some village because I think we, we had to like fix our car and we had a mechanic in that village and we couldn't afford to fix it in the city, it was too expensive, so we went there uh, to fix it there. And the village was in uh, no longer Ukraine, it was between Ukraine and Moldova and the disputed territory. There is a, it's still disputed by the way, nothing really changed there. And when you pass the checkpoint on the, on the road, I mean, there are armed soldiers and guns and tanks. And, and it's, it's very, the, one of the reasons I really like how the book is written because you don't make anything out of it. You, you kind of like, okay, here's a tank uh, and I'm driving and I hope, that, hope they won't stop me. Uh, and if they do hope I can, I don't know, give them a bottle of vodka to get out of the situation. But um, you kind of take it day by day. It's, it's, this is what's happening. Um, but I'm sure it's a lot worse in, in the real war zone. And like I said, I was really fortunate not to never to actually be in the real war zone. Um, the, the book really makes it uh, like, so like the, um, you know, no longer holding hands in public or um, the explanation how they, uh, they, they drop a piece of furniture to close the window. So if a stray bullet goes in, it, it gets into the furniture first, provides some protection. That's what people do. I mean, I, I've, I've spoken to a lot of people who, um, uh, who stayed there, who've been in these situations. And uh, yeah, that's, this is what people do. They just make do day to day. Um, and the realization how horrible this is needs to wait for a couple of years after this is over. Uh, and then it bubbles up and, and uh, you know, people have all kinds of psychological problems and have to deal with it. Um, yeah, it's uh, yet another, why, 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 yet another reason why I like the book so much because the author really got, got that right, how to, yeah. you know, that, that experience. And you, I guess also the idea that, that you just make your workarounds the situation without really thinking why you have to make those workarounds. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I am also very fortunate that I don't come from a, a or that didn't live in an area that was in an active conflict. Uh, but in Mexico, they, there is an internal, well, the government declared it war against uh, the cartels. And mm -hmm. so there was like this not so much in Mexico City, but there are areas where it's uh, there's all these things that are happening that you just read on the news, and you come to a point where you read about them and you you understand rationally how terrible these things are, but at the same time, you just have to go with your everyday things, and 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 there's not like time to process how now you don't travel if I want to go outside like somewhere else, you don't you don't travel at night, just don't drive at night, and then. Uh, you make little workarounds about, uh, I'm going to, I need to go from place A to place B, but I have to avoid this area because I know that it's not very safe and that it's like, there are all these things that I, I really shouldn't, or um, like the, the she, she says that she, uh, Nadia uses the, the, like she says that she uses the, the veil and everything to kind of it's, it had no religious purpose other than to keep people away from me uh -huh. and uh, and like all these things that that she does 
that shouldn't have to be done, but at the same time, you kind of normalize them in a way because you do them so you can do a, like live a, a, your normal life. And, uh, you know, like having to think, especially as a woman, having to think what to wear so people won't uh, like mess with you or like, I'm going to this area, so I really need to wear things that are not too flashy or that don't draw too much attention to myself. Uh, I I am not gonna take out my phone, um, and uh, you know, there's this. I, I remember uh, like there was this one time where we were at, at an area where a couple of guys came in. I was with my friends, and they started like talking to us, and they were asking where if we were students and at that time, I was a student at a private college in Mexico. Uh, uh, they're like, oh, you're students. Yes, yeah, we're, we're studying architecture. Oh, OK, where are you studying? And we all say the name of the public school, like the public national college, because we didn't want to like give out more information than we had to. Um, so there's like all these things that you don't think about too much at the moment. You just do them as second nature to just like keep keep going with it. Uh, but then you think about them and you're like, no, this is like you said, it's afterwards that you like, and and that's something that the book does really well. Like you, you do a double take. You read it the first time, and you kind of like get how casual it is for this. Like not casual, but how it, it has become the norm for for this uh, characters. But then when you take a step out of the book and you look at the big picture, is when you understand how uh, crazy things are getting. Yeah, that's unfortunate, but yeah, and I think that's that's uh, pretty much what what I uh, wanted to to talk about. Thank you so much for those insights and like the whole story. Uh, I I want to feel like in ten years I'm gonna uh, get to that moment where I'm like, oh yeah, I no longer uh, have a second. I can order pizza without feeling <laughs> pressure on how I'm going to order it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Camila and Gennady, for your time today. That was a really great discussion. I really enjoyed hearing both of your stories. Um, we do have a few minutes left, so I did want to open it up to any questions from the audience. If anyone has any, um, feel free to put it in the chat or to just unmute yourself. Um, otherwise, I have a question myself, but just want to give some time to others. In the meantime, um, you two already touched on this a little bit, but I was hoping um, if you had any, you know, words of wisdom or advice that you would give to your past self now that, you know, you've been here for, you know, a year and a half or quite some time now, you know, what you know now that you wish you had known then before you came to the US. And in that same vein, um, any advice you have for our international students um, at Tandon and at NYU. Well, advice for students is it's uh, um, in particular in the field of technology, the engineering and computer, you know, computer science, software engineering. I actually think that people who are happen to have a passion for this field are lucky. Uh, I consider myself very lucky because I've been able to do what I like and build um, a decent life around it. Um, you know, market supports it. Um, people need more software engineers. It's blowing up, and it has been for the as long as I can remember. Um, I remember teaching the um, workshops for the professors. So when I when I did um, my studies at Pace University in the city, uh, there were uh, workshops. I was working in a computer lab, teaching workshops for professors uh, exploring the internet. It was that new thing, the internet, and nobody knew what it was. Um, I would say keep you know be on lookout for for the next internet for something that may happen in your lifetime where you will be right there to 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 learn it and maybe influence it um, and just be passionate about what you like you know it's uh, I still like my personal experience I believe that you're being in this field being in this country. Um, give you an opportunity to 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 do what you like, uh, and 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 uh, make a difference for for people, for other people. Uh, as far as going to my former self, I don't know. 
it's it's very hard to you know the the past is gone you know past is past uh, maybe slightly more consistency would be nice with building um, you know as, as an immigrant you're not always in position to build a plan you kind of do day at a time um, there is the guiding principle you know keep do what what you think is best for your family I just keep doing that uh, it's kind of like a you know north pole it's a, it's, a, it's a compass thing that really helps um, maybe maybe that <laughs> uh, I I just for like I guess my my past self and all new like students or international students uh, the main the first thing that I would say is like just don't be afraid to be yourself. At first, when you get into a new place, you don't want to show too much because you're in defensive mode. And so you're uh, like, you enter school and you're just like kind of reading the room. And you know, we're always reading the room and trying to like say, okay, what what's the, how things are going here. But uh, just like be more open about yourself from the start uh, will we'll help you First, feel more, more comfortable, and uh, second, find those who will connect with you faster. And so, uh, you know, if you, uh, at first, it's very easy to be scared and to, you know, not feel very comfortable, but get out a little bit of your comfort zone and, and just talk to other people and like show what you like and, uh, you know, the passion. You know, to show your passion and if you're passionate about what you're studying or what you're, what you're doing or, or just show it and, and, and make it be a big part of yourself will also help you a lot to feel more comfortable uh, wherever you are. So like, that's what I would say to my past self and to all new students, especially like grad students, we only have two years. So like the, the faster you start feeling comfortable in the space that you are in and like the classes and the people, the, the most you're gonna make out of your time here. I love that. Thank you so much to you both. Um, and with that, we will conclude this program. Thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, we wish you all a safe and a happy week, the rest of the week, um, and have a good day. Thank you.